Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. These videos are becoming increasingly more enjoyable for me to do from week to week, um, not necessarily because of the recovery in the stock price. It certainly does go below the surface uh, in my application. There's been some institutional accumulation of the stock here, um, and for good reason. There is way, way too much momentum build, uh, building here for highly on holdings on all fronts, uh, RNG legislation, which are a lot of the reasons that we talked about existing as a potential catalyst for the company as we evolve on this mission to uh, realize uh, a, a, a cleaner transportation sector. And I, I look at the competition um, very intimately. Um, I disclosed on my live stream Friday that I actually exited my long calls on Nikola uh, for a profit, I might add, but um, it wasn't after uh, taking the the leaps into some significant deep water, um, and um, and decided to go ahead and exit uh, that that position. My conviction just isn't there. Uh, it has everything to do with um, the business model and the amount of units that need to be turned out by Nikola to, to actually turn a profit. I, I just don't see them garnering as much interest as they are being provided favor in. Conversely, uh, Hylion is being provided uh, no benefit whatsoever um, and not sure what's going on. Uh, accumulations happening, institutions are seeing it. Uh, perhaps maybe the only stock sale, whether or not a buy or a sell uh, from internal uh, ownership uh, from Patrick Sexton, probably tells some of the story about uh, some of the insiders at Highly on Holdings being a little bit reluctant to buy the stock. I don't know why. Um, I hope they continue to wait. I hope they miss out on this this opportunity for the executives and the compensation that I was able to review. You, um, on the last 10 Q, I believe, after the uh, 2022 annual stakeholder meeting of 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 um, uh, of acknowledging not only their um, corporate accounting uh, company to extend their contract, which I thought was really the only thing that um, I was that interested in, uh, as far as extending places of the board of directors for all of these executives that have decided to liquidate stock. Um, is, is somewhat troublesome to me as I represent one third of the current total um, uh, highly on shares outstanding through uh, retail investing, private, uh, uh, just regular people um, who own this stock and then 30% uh, by institutions and the, the remaining 30% by, by insiders. Um, but it, it's really that one third that I advocate for, and I think uh, it has been nothing short of disappointing of a road over the last couple of years. Um, you know, the compensation scales that I look at here with Hylion, and people are going to disagree. They're going to cringe when I talk along this dialogue, because I know there's a lot of people who expect of me to come on and talk nothing but good about Hylion, and we're going to do that today. Um, there was absolutely some phenomenal news that came, and I'm going to jump you into the original investor presentation, which has caught uh, a lot of scrutiny from me over the last couple of years. But one specific slide um, that does a really great job of cross comparing the highly young vision and how they're going after the total cost of ownership savings. Um, just furthered by the newest proposal here from the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. If you guys did not have a chance to see that, it is the very first news release uh, on the Hylion.com website. I would invite you to kick over there, click on investors, and then click on the very first uh, news release. Hylion supports movement of inflation uh, for the Reduction Act of 2022 toward fighting climate change uh, Click over to the business wire uh, write up um, as they are the sole source of fantastic coverage of Hylion up to this point, whereas um, the rest of the coverage on Hylion, quite frankly, pales in comparison. Um, I put them in the same uh, category, basically, as the National Enquirer, uh, as being just a bunch of garbage and fluff that covers this company. Um, outside of the Discord group, which uh, I know that there's been a lot of people who have joined 
um, based on my counsel and, and guidance to that Discord group, that's great. You're going to find all kinds of information in there. It is um, one of the best independent sources of information anywhere on, in the world uh, on this company. Uh, and as we move toward mass scale and, and globalization, you're going to want to know where these sources of information are. Because as I've evolved with the Independent Investor Channel, I've moved away from coming out with the feudal three stock picks per month videos, which is a complete and utter waste of your freaking time and mine. This, my friends, is not. This is one of those opportunities that do not come very often. This is uh, one of those opportunities that we've had all kinds of time to sit back and marinate on. We have had all kinds of time to sit here and observe the stock be oversold for a significant amount of more time than what I think has been deserving of the company. However, I think with the way that this company came public through the SPAC process, I think they're going through some of the financial validation here under public scrutiny that they would have otherwise went through during or through the IPO process. And I don't even know if they would have been eligible to come IPO right now. That's a, for another talking head or or, a, or an evaluator um, or a corporate accountant to determine at this point whether or not um, these fundings uh, and this one shot that these guys have to do to fully realize their business plan is going to come to fruition. The ironic part about it is they, again, are doing it um, on the dime of the original funding that came through through the SPAC process on the backs of many investors, myself included. And those are the folks that I indeed advocate for. So uh, well, I'd like to welcome everybody to the weekly message. This is the most unappreciative message. This is typically breaking all levels of rules of common courage courtesy and consideration with regard to uh, the acknowledgement that this product is being put out so frequently. Um, I will say that tongue in cheek, full well suggesting that I don't need Hylion's validation or acknowledgement to this. When I tweet uh, to put a question up on the uh, earnings board at the um, conclusion of prepared remarks uh, on this, uh, which is going to be their next earnings call coming up on Wednesday, August 10th. You guys are going to want to stay tuned for that. Um, I'm a little bit muted in my excitement for this earnings, um, you know, mill, mill and a half of earnings. Great. That's, that's great. We are still in a phase of transitioning to what is happening right now in the Cedar Park facility uh, and keeping our eye on where this company could potentially go into the future. 1.5 million of top end revenues with again, zero profit for the company is going to be kind of a non-starter for me. So I'm estimating in, in between an $800,000 top end revenue and perhaps maybe even a 1.5 million, which would be a little bit closer to the top of the range um, that I would be looking at. Um, who knows? I mean, they could come out and just suggest that they've got another $500,000 of top end revenue it wouldn't be surprised me a bit. This company has done nothing but prove to me that it is absolutely a futile effort to try to forecast what it is that these guys have got going on behind the scenes. And my bullish conviction on the company is very, very forthcoming. Uh, I'm very, very transparent with what it is that I um, have have invested in right now in the company about 12,050 shares, maybe a little bit more there. I've got a little bit for my kids uh, put away for their future. Um, as I do believe that this company really needs to get its footing, which I believe it's doing, um, uh, really strengthen and base the stock out, which I believe it's been doing for the last couple of months. Nobody's really talked about it. Um, I think I'm the first one to come out and just say what I'm about to say. And from the uh, from the trough to the peak now uh, at $4.52, the stock's up 60%. So those of us that have been stock owners this whole time, um, we've taken it into the downturn and we've seen an appreciation to the upside of 60%. What does that mean to our bottom line? Nothing. Um, a lot of us are carving back a lot of what has been an exacerbated sell-off in the name and we need much, much more uh, in way of better days to see this thing through. 
You know, I, I, I mentioned Patrick Sexton's no longer with the company anymore. Um, he was their CTO and um, really with the Hylion team since the beginning. And um, he is the only stock sale from 2022 that's on the ledger. And it was a liquidation of about 68,000 shares. Um, again, I am trying to be as neutral as I can with this application, but uh, merely su to suggest that um, his angst in selling the stock at uh, $3.31 um, has cost him a whopping 82000 bucks. So, you know, for somebody like that and for these board of directors that are being gifted multiple 100,000 share, 100, share blocks of stock and um, cash compensations and award bonuses that according to their last 10 and Q, um, they didn't meet a lot of those incentives. So they were paid bonuses of zero. Um, I believe that those bonuses will be met and those thresholds will be overcome to actually realize some of that compensation for some of the executive team there. Um, but I cringe when I look at this executive board right now, because if the revenues are coming through at $800,000 to a mil, mil and a half, I know companies that are generating three to $4 million that are micro cap companies that are traded on the OTC quality board markets. Uh, and even some of the companies that I cover into the pink sheets are making more money than Hylion.com or Hylion Holdings. Um, and these executives are pulling in, uh, you know, six figure uh, salaries as if they're making it. Um, and the verdict is still out. Um, so, you know, I understand paying people the compensation, but you better at some point put your money where your mouth is. And don't get me wrong. I actually agree with the compensation. I actually agree that it's a sign of strength for the company to be provided what it is. For example, a CFO should be paid. A CEO should be paid. Okay. The ironic part for me is where are where's the confidence in the company that's portrayed outside of just you know teaching about evs and going to a few expos and talking about how bullish everybody is on the company and the company fails to meet targets for their hybrid ex sales all right something's got to give at some point okay and these interesting uh, levels of compensation right now is something that I grip my teeth on a little bit. Look, I, I don't care. I'm from the dirt. All right. You're not going to get any jealousy for me. What, what do I have to be jealous about? I've been broke my whole life, right? This half a million dollar portfolio that I sit on, I think is uh, somewhat uh, irrelevant at this point in my life. I don't look like, it, like that as something that's anything special. Um, I'm very, very excited about the position and highly on, but you know, these positions that a lot of these top end executives have liquidated uh, over the past couple of years have been, you know, 5x, 10x what my pos little position is that I've been able to, to build up and until now incur nothing but heartache with regard to this stock holding. Better days ahead? Certainly. That's my bullish conviction. Does historical performance mean that it's going to uh, render uh, those predictable results into the future. I don't believe so. I believe this company is going to surprise to the upside. And I believe we're sitting on an opportunity of a lifetime here. But this company has a lot of work to do. And I think it's fair for me as a neutral voice on the company, an independent commentator on Hylion, and quite frankly, the sole uh, source of information that is frequent and one that I put online with uh, some um, uh, some consistency and predictability out there uh, and with a level head. I'm looking to look at, share the information from my lens as I see it. You guys obviously know I come from a bullish perspective. I have to disclose what it is that I own with my share position in all fairness. So people don't misconstrue my message and say, well, he's one way or this and that, or he's this way or that. Look, if you want to take over my weekly videos, great. I'll tune into you and become a steward and a student of the game. No problem. But the reason why I came out with this product was because about a year and a half ago, I identified that Hylion was not doing what they needed to do on their own to push their message forward. Furthermore, my question on Twitter that speaks to the one OEM right now that they have 
basically pledged their loyal ship to, to take them to the promised land. Has there been any type of movement on this supply chain issue that evidently has just plagued highly on holdings? And dare I say, it's not plagued other companies that have been able to find parts, find products, find wire clips and harnesses. I, I mean, can we just go down to Home Depot and pick up some of these things? Uh, you know, I, I joke a little bit and I poke the bear a little bit to suggest that you are a 700, almost an $800 million company. And this excuse has gone long enough. It's gone long enough. Find the parts, build them your damn self. Okay. What we need to do is we need to understand progress on this. And it shouldn't be me asking the question to suggest that maybe management has identified a little bit of progress on this front and that yes, indeed, those parts have been identified and backfilled and back ordered. And, and, and we can expect that that is going to move the timeline to the left a little bit. Are we holding true on the said timeline or have we shifted further to the right to further delay what has already been a two-year delay in the release of the Hypertruck ERX? And we have heard nothing. We've heard nothing. Highly on supports efforts to you know, provide tax credit. Of course they do. All right. But I'm more interested in the internal granular uh, aspects of Hylion. And mark my words, you can go on to Hylion, excuse me, onto Twitter, like it. Um, I've already got about 30 likes. I haven't checked it this morning, um, but I'm the number one question on Twitter when Hylion uh, specifically put out that they would actually address at least one or multiple comments on that one specific thread on Twitter on their next earnings call. Uh, and I fully expect that they will ignore me, just like they have done for the last two years. Um, they have ignored all solicitations for all interviews. And a lot of people would say, well, Ryan, you screwed up. I beg to differ. No, I beg to differ. Um, I've earned it. I deserve it. They should come on and do it. It's just that simple. They should. It's just that simple. Um, if Hylion is going to operate like they are a one or a $2 billion company, then you better start producing results that a one or a $2 billion company should be producing. And my friends, you don't need to be producing anemic revenues of one or 2 million right now. You need to be producing revenues in the hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? When and if that ever happens is the expectation. Get there, get there. Um, you'll get no sympathy in business from me, none, none. The company came public. You've got all the opportunity. You've got all the tailwind. Everything that I've ever read is so bullish on RNG, CNG right now. It is an absolute slam dunk for these guys. And I think that the only people who are going to fail at this opportunity is Hylion. Now, they seem to think that their focus needs to be on executive compensation and making sure that their board of governance is still in place to be in place for what reason? I have no idea. I've yet to determine that they've provided zero net benefit to Hylion, doc, to Hylion Holdings up to now. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Leave it in the thread and challenge my assessment that Elaine Chow has provided any benefit whatsoever outside of being gifted, what, $100,000 bonus for sitting the board? Uh, that's what most people make in a, in a year salary in half, Right as well as her gifted shares. What contribution has really been made? Has she made one single phone call on behalf of this company? I, I'm interested in a board of governance that actually turns out results. I come on and blah, 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 but I don't get paid to do so. I do so free of charge, okay? These folks are being paid to produce action. And I'm waiting patiently for this board of directors, this all-star board of directors, uh, I might add, to step up and do the right thing and actually start producing some results with this company. Amazon just signed a huge deal for RNG with clean energy. What does that have to do with Hylion? Well, hell, I don't know, guys. You tell me. You tell me. It only fits like a round peg in a freaking hole for Hylion in that they produce a hypertruck ERX that runs on renewable natural gas, okay? If you asked any executive at Amazon, do they know who Hylion is? Do they? Or would they say, I have no idea what you're talking about? If I went to the Peterbilt Depot and asked them, have you ever heard of Hylion? This is their one OEM, mind you, right? Would they say, 
yeah, absolutely. We've been we've been in business that, with them for many many years. They're we're going to work with them to provide the Hypertruck ERX. Now, according to Hylion, they're absolutely partners with the, this OEM with Peterbilt. Okay. Now, these results need to be uh, start to turned out. Now, my question as well is, how does the new potential credits for the uh, new uh, Hypertruck ERX being turned off the line, how does that affect um, those initial 10 orders? Are they going to wait? Are they going to be eligible for those credits? Are we again going to have to wait? Uh, can we turn out that with the idea that they will be back credited uh, for that uh, be, uh, past the, the effective date of the mandate, 40,000 bucks is a big deal, guys, on a 10, 10 order, right? That's, that's, that's an awful big deal. That's a $400,000 cost savings to the bottom line. I mean, that's two hyper truck ERXs for, for, for free, <laughs> you know? So are they going to backdate these? Um, so uh, I, I think as I uh, offer these um, videos from week to week, I think it speaks to my um, demand over Hylion to continue to um, provide news where it's newsworthy to be provided to share owners, because um, unlike the institutions that just have all of the patients to just sit on their wad, we've got Vanguard at 11% ownership, we've got uh, Cole Capital at 10%, um, and then one of my favorite companies, BlackRock, at 9% total ownership of the company. I mean, that right there is 20% ownership in the top three uh, of institutional owners with this company. Um, you know, th those folks are buying them, including them into the mutual funds. They can um, sit on those shares as long as they need. But to advocate for those retail investors um, that took some of the learnings and, and some of the um, uh, some of the information that was provided on the onset to suggest that agility has a thousand uh, to binding uh, trucks. And you might say, well, it's not binding, right? Yeah, but they changed it after. They changed it. On the initial investor presentation, it says that one of the major fleets has a binding order of a thousand. Is it not binding? Did they break the agreement? Does Agility have any intention whatsoever of doing anything other than nothing? And, and, and that's what they've done thus far. They created a lot of churn. They created a, a, a lot of uh, sputter. Um, and a lot of conversation at, at, on the onset. And since then, they've done nothing. They've done nothing. So, you know, from the board to the upper management, uh, to the fleets out there that uh, suggest that they're part of the Hypertruck ERX Council, get on board. These people are providing a roadmap. Rowan and NFI, they've provided a, ro a roadmap here for initial entry into solidifying their build slots. And I, I don't think 10 slots is too big of a deal uh, to ask of agility. Now, I'm going to tear that up if they come out with 10. Having been able to just throw out a, a thousand binding order on the onset, right? Why didn't they just say that they were going to order 10,000 or 100,000 on the onset? If they had no intention of, of, of ever filling that order, why didn't they just generate that? Hell, the stock might have shot up to $1,000 as opposed to 58, right? That's, that's the game nowadays, baby. It's the Wild West, right? We just had a stock uh, this, this week come out IPO. Would it go up 7,500% for no reason whatsoever? You know, we had Hyzon drop 40% this week out of, the, out of the blue, right? Because of accounting practices in China and the company that had uh, supposedly placed an order with Hyzon that had only been in business or in, uh, in, um, it, it had been in business for three days. <laughs> I didn't look at the specifics, but kind of embarrassing there. Um, is highly on next? It seems that Nikola has really caught the favor of the stock market. Nikola can do no wrong. Um, they can acquire companies. Uh, they can further their debt. They can issue uh, 200 million more shares with no problem. Doesn't bat an eye. Doesn't affect the stock whatsoever. Stock goes up every single day. They have favor. They churn out a lot of volume every day. Hylion has zero volume per day, zero. Million shares traded hands per day is nothing. Nobody's trading this stock, nobody. And I don't know who's selling their stock enough to allow for these uh, shares to be available on the common uh, place for um, companies like Alps Clean and, and CIBC Private to add to their positions this week. 
Mm -hmm. So a lot going on, man, a lot of churn. Um, Hyleon is doing some great things. I hate to start the video with such a negative connotation, but I tell you what, it's, it's, it's of interest to me um, to ask the question, will it pay off? Um, will, will these high levels of compensation pay off from a CEO that has done nothing but liquidate his shares? Right? Is $450,000 a year to the CFO really that necessary when the balance sheet and, and the books could probably be kept by somebody like myself? <laughs> Who, who has uh, a two, two years in college and very little accounting experience. I mean, what are we accounting for here, guys? What are we accounting for? Um, to use her words, we're talking about revenues that are immaterial at this point, immaterial. Um, the navigation from going from immaterial revenues to something that actually is self-sustaining because Hylion has a clock. Okay. And inevitably, the funding that they've been provided through the SPAC process coming to public markets uh, will inevitably dry up. Now, by their admission, they suggest that they can follow along their business plan uh, and not have to seek out additional funding. <laughs> right, right. Um, that's kind of like sitting on the airplane and they say, we're delayed by 15 minutes, full well knowing that it's going to be a two hour delay or a flight cancellation. Right. Um, that's the politically correct way of saying, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. Uh, I'm rooting for you. I'm doing the best I can again on this unreciprocated. The only people who appreciate this message that I put out every week are the very patrons of the message. And mark my words, guys, you are getting a special treat because nobody looks at companies the way I do. Nobody. I've tried. Trust me. If I could just find a couple other channels out there that I could watch and relate with and say, man, this individual guy or gal is just as impassioned and touch on touches on the things that I do. Great. I would relinquish this project altogether, at least the highly on portion of it to somebody else. And we could share the burden in this, but I just don't see it. Now, again, this stock is seeking a little bit of favor here, up 60% from the from the base at 268 here. Uh, stocks uh, went up to what, 452 at the close Friday. So 60% um, appreciation here to the upside. We're looking really, really good off of the, the base. It's provided some strength. Um, I'm up 68% on my options. I'm holding them. I don't care. Um, I'm looking to be up thousands of percent on those options. I'm not, I'm not looking at a 60% profit as anything crazy. Um, and um, it will continue to fight that. And, and I'll continue to share with you guys the, the progress on that. Do I, do I see the company going below $3 again? Uh, I, I, I don't at this point could be very, very premature and irresponsible on my part to suggest that we have seen the worst and the worst is behind us. But if you look at the stock action and where this company projected to go and where they ended up in public markets, I actually think that the stock action was actually 100% justified and 100% warranted. You know, my only regret is not seeing it sooner, uh, not seeing that um, when the supply chain issues were actually announced, I think there's a lot of people out there that were like, I'm out at $7. I thought you were crazy. I really did. I, that was the wrong decision. I mean, taking that stop loss at seven and then rebuying the stock at let's say $3 or even dare I say $4 here um, would have been a huge, huge cost savings to you and, and a preservation of capital because this company has done nothing, nothing. If you look at a long-term stock chart, this blip over 60% increase from its base really is not that impressive. It's not. We need a real catalyst. We need real legislation. We don't need proposals. We need real sales. We don't need projections. We need real sales. We need real amp up. We need real solidification that the supply chain issues are potentially uh, softening up a little bit. And Hyleon has found these parts on aisle 10 at Home Depot to wire harness the, the wire runs uh, to the E-axle, I guess, on this unit that, that can actually last for a few years before they have to be replaced. I, I, I pick a little fun here. But this is the big leagues and the initial uh, acknowledgement to the supply chain issues, fair enough, acknowledged. Um, now, remedy is the only solution. 
remedy is the only solution. Other than that, there's an ulterior motive that I'm just not seeing. You're trying to buy time. You are not ready. <laughs> You, you, you truly do have the parts, but you just don't have the demand over the product? Certainly. Help us understand what is going on right now. And hopefully we are uh, provided a little bit of color on this uh, coming uh, earnings call here uh, on August, Wednesday, August 10th. So I'll be eagerly um, awaiting that. Um, I'll, I catch every single earnings call from Hylion I have uh, since its inception. Uh, I'm intrigued by the, um, uh, fascinated really by where this company sits right now. And I think we'll probably look back on this time and say it was, it was so, so far removed of where this company is now. Uh, you know, to reflect back on this time here at a stock price of three, I see the stock price at 40, 50, 60 bucks, easy within the next five years, easy. And I'm funny, I'll look at the company and evaluate its progress based on its um, inception. Uh, and I won't, I won't sell the company for no reason. I've said many times, I'll do a first look at $100. Uh, but if there's no reason to sell the stock, guys, I'm crazy. I won't sell the stock. I'll hold it indefinitely. I'll hold it. Um, I'll work for that, you know, 10 year, 15, 20 year appreciation, which we're talking about tens of thousands of percent at that point. So to, to, to reflect back on this time right now, which I feel like is one of the greatest opportunities, again, for highly on to be had. It's highly on is the one that needs to step up and, and make this thing happen. Have they put together a, a board of governance that can, can make it happen? I believe that they can, but they have not yet. And I'm, I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting for those connections to be made to the industry. And oh, by the way, remind people that Hylion is a small company that could trying to make big waves in a very, very big pond, which is the class eight commercial space, guys. So um, I do want to address the big news of the week this week, which is the 40,000 credits. And to do so, I'm actually going to segue into a video script that I made uh, of the original uh, investor presentation as part of this video to kind of look at the numbers and break down the numbers in a way that will um, demonstrate for the viewer of this video how I think that $40,000 of potential credit on the initial cost of ownership of the Hypertruck ERX uh, is going to affect the total cost of ownership over time. It's not necessarily about just the $40,000. And I tell you what, at about a hundred, little over 110,000, 100,000 or so of additional software, hardware, and uh, machinery that needs to go into the Hypertruck ERX. That's basically the cost of the unit when compared to the diesel unit, which is about, oh, 100, what are we talking about? $130,000 of the initial upfront cost, um, only to be subject to about 300,000 of fuel costs. Now that figure has probably gone up 25% at least since, um, um, since that investor presentation was turned out because cost of diesel was significantly less then, uh, it is significantly more now. So that total cost of ownership has only gotten worse on the diesel side of it. Now, mind you, it's gotten worse on the uh, compressed natural gas side of the house, uh, but relatively speaking, the ratio of um, the fuel uh, to the diesel equivalent gallon of fuel still maintains that CNG and RNG is a far superior product and it moves us away from that um, diesel uh, dominated uh, future for us trying to move away from fossil fuels. So I'm going to drop you guys into that uh, presentation at this point, and we're going to go over just a quick lesson on how I think the numbers shake out uh, on what this proposal for fleets could mean for the 40,000 uh, tax credit. So I'm going to kick you in there now and uh, we'll kick you back in just a bit. So welcome to everybody into the original uh, investor presentation. This was the uh, highly on a tortoise acquisition uh, presentation. This is just the one slide deck we're going to be working off of. Um, this was the investor presentation heard around the world. Um, I still go back to this and review some of the information and projections that were made, some of it's uh, come to fruition, some of it has uh, accelerated along their time frame, and, and other milestones have, have, have not been met. Um, and that's to be expected with a new company that's uh, 
um, you know, come public and been public now for a couple of years anyway. But some of the latest additions or uh, developments in legislation that has come, come through the pike um, has affected this uh, 220000 uh, initial onset cost here, which is about uh, $100,000, dollars $110,000 difference, $90,000, $100,000, whatever that is, about ninety grand of cost when compared to the diesel um, uh, equivalent here in a cross comparison between these two and what this could potentially mean for the company. I think as we look to cross compare these, I want to note here that at the time of filming this video, diesel's around $4.25 a gallon. Um, this at the time was uh, assuming a diesel cost of around $3 per gallon. So uh, an increase there, huge increase. Um, in the cost of diesel over the time that this was placed and, and what I'm filming. But for demonstration purposes here, this will absolutely prove the point that I'm trying to make here in what this new legislation or proposed legislation for the $40,000 tax credit, which the Hypertruck ERX will um, uh, actually be eligible to enjoy, that $40,000 on the onset is going to come right off of this two hundred and twenty dollars on the initial onset. Now, this, this could have been a pain point for the industry. And what I mean by that is diesel on the onset um, run about $132,600. Now, if there's revisions to that figure since this was originally projected back in 2020, I'm, I'm open to he hearing those suggestions um, through natural just uh, inflationary uh, pressures and the increased cost of goods. Um, I would imagine that that cost of diesel um, uh, compared to 2020 is probably up, you know, a, a, a significant amount, probably 150, 160,000, maybe more uh, on the initial onset cost, but then only to be subject to fuel cost. And this is a real alarming statistic here, 300,000 over the total cost of ownership projection time frame, which is around seven years is what they used in this example. Uh, 300,000 of fuel cost, whereas if you cross compare the amount of uh, cost that is expected to be garnered from renewable natural gas placed in the Hypertruck ERX, it's about one third of the total fuel cost over time. So the significant fuel reduction is, is enormous and it's, it's really undisputable um, when you're talking about becoming less reliant on a diesel dominated past and, and putting your uh, investment into something that is much more sustainable. Uh, it's available through existing infrastructure and it um, is better for the environment. So kind of meets all fronts of the initiative here. But the $40,000 tax credit is here because if you pay close attention, the initial cost of ownership is fairly low. And it's not until you run the unit for that seven years that you incur this cost of ownership, which drives this bottom line up to 431850 The same token here, the initial cost is actually more than the diesel unit. But as you operate the unit more, that's where the cost savings really starts to drive down your total cost of ownership um, over the long run, where you get the cost savings in the fuel expected fuel cost over that seven-year period, but also a net increase in the amount of payload that can be carried by the unit having uh, more horsepower and more torque uh, than the diesel counterpart here, which drives this uh, total uh, uh, cost or TCO figure to the fleets at around 279776 Now that's without the tax incentive. That is figuring in the 35000 of extra payload that could be potentially hauled uh, over that um, time period for a co total cost savings of 35%. And I've always suggested that Hylion can stand on its own with its numbers. Um, it uh, makes sense all the way around the edges, even at the fringes. Uh, this just makes sense. This is um, not redesigning the entire truck, but I want to bring your attention to a couple of things. First of all, this 35 is a net positive over the total cost of ownership of the, of the truck. And when you look at the um, uh, comparison between their competition, both Nikola and Tesla, this is a net negative. 
In other words, this means that $52,500 of lost potential payload that could have been otherwise shipped is going to be lost for opting for the fuel cell uh, vehicle, the hydrogen fuel cell. Okay. Comparatively, the Tesla will lose 140000 on the full electric vehicle of potential payload that could have been transported that was lost uh, due to what I would presume to be extra battery weight from these units that cannot travel as far, have, and are subject to downtime due to charging, whereas the Hypertruck is not. Uh, their fueling uh, times are comparable to those of what would be uh, incurred from a diesel unit itself. So it's not necessarily the ability of the Hypertruck to turn back this 35000 which over seven years is really not that impressive. The impressive piece is to understand that it is uh, positive, uh, irrespective of, 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 of anything else other than when you compare it to their competition, who's actually losing money on the payload side of the house, okay? So the cross comparison really is the key here in understanding that even on a standalone, as projected in 2020, uh, the Hypertruck ERX far outweighs um, the uh, cost of total ownership here of a Nikola product and a Tesla product here when compared to the Hypertruck. When you add that 40000 of incentive, it actually relieves the hundred or so thousand dollars of initial investment made into the technology. It actually relieves that by about 40% and brings this 220000 down to about $180,000, which is incredible. That puts it almost in line with what a new diesel truck would actually call for with a little bit of a premium placed on uh, the technology and then to be realized realizing this fuel savings right up front really does take a huge amount of weight off of these fleets that are having to make the uh, initial leap of faith into a new technology really does help uh, shoulder some of the burden of that um, initial cost by 40,000 and you might be thinking okay well what does that mean for the bottom line what it means is if you lower this to 180 and take the same projections for fuel and payload, this actually boosts this cost savings of TCO from 35% to 44% over the life of the truck. If you could save almost half of your total cost of ownership per unit by stepping into a Hypertruck ERX as opposed to remaining with the diesel, uh, application here which has historically been uh, proven to be the most reliable method of transporting our goods from point A to point B. This is staggering when you look at what that 40000 per unit uh, incentive actually provides on the upfront cost of the unit itself and how that renders itself over time. It's not necessarily about the 40000 it's about the initial buffering of the initial upfront cost and gets fleets into the unit that much more cheaper to realize this bottom line benefit of payload uh, and fuel savings over the total cost uh, of the life and ownership of that unit, um, which is absolutely incredible. And, and so I wanted to bring you guys in here and really show you how I thought that it affected the numbers and, and this bottom line total cost of ownership. Uh, piece. I thought that it was the most prudent in explaining what I felt like um, would best explain w the real impact of that $40,000 proposed tax incentive or tax credit to this initial upfront cost to enter into this unit. So with that, guys, we'll kick you back and we'll, con con we'll continue the video. All right, guys, so we're back. And that is a great way of kind of demonstrating for you guys what I think the impact of the bottom line will be. Um, cost savings on multiple fronts. And I think as I was able to explain in this, it's not necessarily Hylion being able to stand on its own. Um, I've always suggested that Hylion could stand on its own with the numbers, but man alive, it would be huge to get some incentive help. And just over the last month, this might be the reason why the stock's up 60% from its base.
it very well may, may be, and ju justifiably so. When you're talking about a $1 fuel credit for RNG and CNG in any capacity, it doesn't have to be 100% RNG, it can be equivalent to uh, an amount uh, for the amount not only sold, but consumed, as well as the $40,000 tax credit. I, I sit back as a fan. I I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a share owner. I'll be a share owner tomorrow. I'll be a share owner next year. It's just that simple because the progress being made on this front is irrefutable. And the talking heads that would suggest perhaps maybe that Hylion was not a good idea a year ago, where are those people now? Where are the analysts covering, covering this company? Where is Stephen Fisher? Where are these guys that were so quick to downgrade the company to $4? Wake up. It's above $4 and it's approaching five. Anytime you want to revise your bullshit price target, please do so. I had a comment come through last time to suggest that maybe by the numbers, the price target of $4 is actually justified. I agree with you in theory. That is why I come out with this video is for the sheer disconnect of what I see in this opportunity and what the analysts are bound to see with a caveat. And that caveat being driving down what they know and what I see. And what these institutions see in their stock purchases, an opportunity of a lifetime, it's in their best interest to drive it down. What incentive do they have to raise their price target as quick as they were to downgrade the company? What incentive do they have to quickly upgrade the company based on the news that has come through and the binding orders that have come through? Not one single iota of movement. Why do you think that is? It's because it is a strategic hit job, just like I've always suggested throughout the history of watching this company get driven down, have an enormous short interest on it since coming public. It's been absolutely annihilated. Hylion didn't do a very good job of defending their position on the initial onset. They didn't. They didn't know what, what was happening, right? And guys like myself were trying to come on and share the, the story on where I knew that in it, it would inevitably go, no matter what happened in the short term with the stock. But where are these analysts? Where are they? Where's Cantor that had a $17 price target? Pretty close to mine, 24, which still holds. If we end 2022 at $12 to $14, perhaps maybe we end it at eight. Hell, we probably will. This company has succumbed to so much damage. I think any uh, increase in the stock is probably going to be temptation for a lot of people to just exit the name prematurely. And those shares will be turned over to institutional investors that will sit on the name for two or three more years and make hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of percent of return because retail investors continue to fall victim to this habitual, and I do mean habitual cycle of companies that come on that have a great, great story and great potential and will end up making it. It's just that the company does, the stock market does not see it that way in the short term. People panic out of the company and they're gone. So what I discussed in this is the 40,000, which is almost 40, 37, 38% of the initial onset cost for the technology. They're getting it effing free. <laughs> they're getting it free. That's incredible. I, I want to go buy a fleet of Hypertruck ERXs for crying out loud. If I was a few million dollars, two or $3 million, hell, if I make two or $3 million, I might, I might enter into the damn trucking business. I might. Chart to your trucking. My God, I'm, a, I'm an independent trucking. Huh? Let's pool together some independent money or some independently made money on highly on holdings, start our own trucking company. What I want to see this company do is to set up um, off the grid hubs. That's what I want to see. Because the craziness right now going on with suburban America and the high cost of real estate being subject to the grid, subject to high property taxes, it would be nothing short of brilliant if Hylion could come off with an off-the-grid generating system with DC electric and converters that can actually power both AC and DC systems for an off-the-grid application and supplement any of the foreseeable loads that a household could demand over that uh, and, and be powered by either solar or natural gas or hydrogen fuel cell. 
amazing, amazing stuff, even powered by diesel for crying out loud. If it's being powered by, by diesel, I could care less as long as I'm, I'm off the grid made possible by the highly on system. I call it the off the grid package. You know, I'd be a buyer of that. And uh, I tell you what, I know people that would actually hook that up and actually be able to demonstrate as a household that was completely free of the grid. You don't think that there's people out there that are interested in that. Oh, you're crazy, Ryan. Yeah. What's new? I'm crazy. Yep. Most people want to fall in line like Hindu cows. They want to become sheep and just, and just nay their entire life because they're stuck to the grid of electrical uh, prices, stuck to the uh, grid of high fuel cost, and stuck to the, and being subject to what is just a continual increase from governments who cannot take enough money from regular people. The taxes are never, ever going to go down. Never. They're going to continually go up. Why? Because people do not have the sense enough to throw the red flag, right? So it's going to be companies like Hylion that allow people to set themselves free, move to the BFE Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming is increasing in population right now. It's the lowest populated state right now in the US, and it's one of the highest growing. It's number 15 on the list for growing states in this country of people who are fed up with it. They're like, to hell with it. I'm moving to you know, the, the backwoods of Montana, or dare I say, I'm moving to Alaska. I'm out of here. I'm off the grid, baby, right? So before these companies in the class eight space are um, willing to commit new dollars to new technology, um, and I actually speculate that these companies are willing to change now without the incentive, how much more lucrative is it going to be with a $40,000 incentive? Now, what does it mean for the stock? I have not bought the stock in two, three months. Um, not since the last time I bought it on the dot. I think 265 was my entry for those $3 strike leaps. That was the last time I bought a block of options. I've not bought the stock outright for a long, long time. And I will not. Uh, I will not buy at these levels, not with the volatility that it is proven uh, to reach certain levels. And, and, and really digress, I will buy it on a dip. I'm not going to buy it on, a, on an aggressive upswing in the stock. I will not do that. However, I will be monitoring it. If it goes down um, into the three and a quarter range, uh, I will be purchasing more stock. I will not be buying uh, aggressively here. I'm good with my position. I'll continue to sit on them as my option strike continue to be met. I'm almost back to black in the black, back in the black, excuse me, on my $5 strikes that I bought many, many years, a year and a half ago, I've held them this entire time. Why? I have the option to 2024. That's what I bought. I bought the option. If you understand what your obligation is, you just sit on it. My bet was that I believed that it would be above $5 before 2024, January of 2024. Um, will it, will it happen? Hell, I don't know. That's my bet. That's my bet. We'll see. Um, that management team, that I give a nice swift kick in the backside to make some phone calls and make this stuff happen. I would be hard pressed to understand if Hylion had anything to do with regard to the influence and the new legislation that was just proposed um, in, in, in Congress uh, with the um, move to a more, uh, a little bit more to fight climate change. I, I don't know what they did. Um, I hope they did. I hope Andrew Card is making those calls. That's what he was put on the board of directors for. And um, I, I hope he's working diligently to make this happen because I, I, I press very, very hard. I speak for a retail community that's just been absolutely obliterated by this company. Is it possible to invest in a company and just see it actually come to uh, fruition? Is it exciting enough to actually invest in a company that um, has all the potential in the world, but will be subject to um, a stock market that does not allow and only stifles new technology to the point where they cannot financially succeed until they're acquired by one of the many, uh, one of the few uh, big companies out there to just absorb this new technology and turn it back to the marketplace. Is it new uh, motivation for new businesses and new technology to come to the forefront when the success ratio is like 1%, you know? I mean, is, is it possible for guys like myself who have been doing stock market investing to look at a company like this and yes, it'll time it. Yes. But look at a company that has all the pedigree, all the pedigree to make it. And I hope Hyleon believes that they can make it. I hope that they do. I hope that they're excited 
with this opportunity. And these are some of the intangibles that I look at from the CEO to say, is this guy excited to share his message in interviews? Is he excited to share the pulse of the inner workings of Hylion from a day-to-day -day perspective? And I sit and I monitor it very, very closely, and I'm a pretty good judge of character. And I would suggest that Thomas has never shown up to an interview and not been very genuinely excited about sharing the story of Hylion. And, and, and I want that to continue. I really do. Um, I think he's a very, very sharp guy. I want this guy to have the opportunity to run this company with some clout, with some clout. He doesn't have it right now. The stock is trading at $5 a share, okay? You're not a clout company when you're a penny company. But when you're a two, three, four, five, ten billion $10 billion dollar company, you got clout, baby. When you've got collaboration from Cummins, who owns Meritor, who supplies, who supplies not only your generator, but your e-axle, you got clout, baby, all right? When you've got the ability to pick up the phone call and not have to introduce yourself every time because people know who you are, that's clout, baby, right? And there's no better person that I could suggest to take the helm on this deal is than, than, than the CEO, Thomas Healy. I think he's done a fabulous job up to this point. The stock has been absolutely terrible, but the company, the company has done what they've needed to do up to this point. And it's going to be exciting times going forward here with catching some of the momentum some of the movement initiatives that I've just been able to pick up on just this week. 17 states uh, will go full electrification on their fleets, 30% of their fleets by 2030. Inevitably, we're going to be there, okay? Where Hylion is from the next uh, eight years, uh, from 2022 to that end, what type of initiatives and mandates will be turned out from Congress to make sure that these companies are able to be provided a little bit of incentive uh, to bridge themselves uh, from being so dependent on diesel? The number one producer of uh, compressed natural gas in the world right now is the United States of America. Right. So pursuing that end makes total sense. I want to continue to see institutional investors continue to accumulate shares. That's going to be nothing but bullish. And I would charge internal ownership if they were willing to buy uh, shares. Nobody bought shares in the fives. Nobody bought them in the fours. Nobody bought them in the threes. And nobody bought them in the twos. I did. Uh, and I'm profiting for it. Now, I'm sorry to Patrick Sexton for losing out on 82,000, but not really, not really. He made a choice to liquidate the shares uh, at a time when probably the company was about as uh, ill-prepared to accept such a large liquidation of shares by such a, 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 a pivotal person who had been there since the beginning of the company, right? It was his choice to do so. Now, the man still owns 328,000 shares of the company, so he's not hurting. But when an insider like that in the CTO position, the chief technical officer sells uh, stock like that, it does have negative ramifications for the stock. Not positive, negative. <laughs> and people will say, ah, it's, no, it's okay, and try to coin it in a box. Get the F out of my face with that. You have an insider who's a top-level guy that sells the stock. And that's the only stock sale on the ledger from 2022, guys. Does that not tell you a little bit? Okay. I only share these things for transparency. I'm not trying to dog the stock. I'm not trying to downplay or down talk highly on. These are the facts. These are the facts. And they are publicly discernible facts. What does that say about the company? The last stock sale from the CEO himself, the one that I said is the most eligible to take this company into the future, was an enormous stock sale in November of 2021. Is he done selling stock? How about accumulating some shares right here? Sherry Baker acquired some shares in the $6 range, right? There was some massive liquidations from one of the other individuals. I don't recall who it is. Uh, I don't. Back in the $7 range, huge liquidations at $7. What does that say to share owners when you come on and you talk about how bright the future is for Hylion, how bright the future is for RNG and CNG, how bright the future is to take this business plan and integrate with um, the current Class 8 marketplace when you have insiders with the company liquidating shares right and left? 
And there's been no share accumulation whatsoever over the last couple of months. And over the last couple of months, the shares are up 68%, 68%. Okay. Now, I'd like to see a little bit more action on, on behalf of the insiders. Take some of that fat ass salary that you have, buy some shares in Hylion. Um, I make $50,000 uh, every single year. Your little uh, independent investor channel that could, who puts out free advertisement for your company um, and is calling you to the carpet and saying that perhaps maybe you can segue a few of those dollars and buy a thousand shares. I don't know, buy a thousand shares, 4,500. Hell, if you guys are suffering and not being able to put food on the table, contact me directly. You can DM me, let me know. Say, Ryan, I'd like to take you up on that offer. I'll just buy you the damn shares yourself, okay? Because I'm not a cheapskate. All right. I see the value in this company. I've been able to accumulate a share price and a share position in the company that is absolutely respectable. Uh, it's a millionaire maker and we'll get there. Uh, but I would highly encourage you to take this journey with us. You're paid to do a job. Is that what it is for you? It's just a job. Uh, Sherry Baker, when she first got uh, hired on with the company, talked about how exciting it was to be with this company. Does she share in the same level of excitement now than she did on the onset when she took the job? I know you're down on those shares, Sherry. I get it. Um, buy some more right here. Buy some more. Make your own independent decision to um, spark some internal buying into the company. Why not? You're at liberty to do that just like you're at liberty to sell. And so far on the ledger, there's been nothing but sells by insider from the very people that we advocate for in leading this company into a cleaner future uh, and a cleaner fleet for tomorrow's world and, and looking to really attack this uh, global warming crisis that we have right now. If you don't think that it's real, um, go outside right now. There's places around the earth that are suffering from heat that has never been incurred before. And that's only going to be um, exacerbated uh, until we take a real step in this right direction and start to integrate some of this technology that is right there for the taking. And Hylion Holdings is right there at the forefront to deliver on that promise uh, for a cleaner tomorrow. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message. Hope you appreciate this spirited weekly update on Hylion Holdings. Do your own due diligence. Um, do your own research. Take a look at Hylion. Take a look at that last investor call from May 22. Um, it was interesting. It's what sparked my interest about all of the executive and high-level board member compensation with the company. Um, I hope it's worth it. Uh, I was always cut from a cloth to earn your money, to work hard and earn your money. I would suggest and charge highly on with doing just that, get to work. There's a lot to work to be done. The opportunity is right there. The momentum and the vision is there to be had, but you have to work like it's, there is a sense of urgency and competition is going to be right around the corner. Keep that first mover advantage. Do not become complacent on this opportunity or you're going to get eaten uh, alive. Because sitting at $5 a share right now, this company is very, very vulnerable. And we need to get to work now in starting to uh, put shareholders at ease in knowing that this company can actually be self-sufficient for many, many years uh, into the future. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom if you think I've missed something. Uh, if you disagree with me uh, and the compensation package of the executives, I'm sure there will be people who hate on me and suggest that they need to make millions while shareholders suffer. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Remember who I'm looking to advocate for, you. I'm looking to advocate for you, okay? I'm one of them. I'm with you on this journey. I am. Uh, and to point out these um, items that are publicly discernible in the open marketplace uh, from news feeds that come through on highly on uh, holdings, uh, we, we talk about them, we draft an opinion on them, and hopefully we can draw a direction on where this company could potentially go into the future. Guys, if you appreciate the content coming through, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Share the message with social media platforms. Anybody out there that you know likes highly on uh, for the future, uh, bring them on to the channel. I do this very consistently every single week on the channel, put through our highly on update. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for staying with me through the totality of the message and good luck in your investment future.